Good morning and welcome to this morning's Digital Devo. My name is Carla Gerard and I'm very happy to be with you all today. As we have the last two days, today is no different. We're gonna be in the book of Nehemiah. Chapter six, starting in verse 10, it says this, and hang on, because there's some fun names in this passage. Verse 10, now when I went into the house of Shemaiah, the son of Deleah, son of Mehetabel, who was confined to his home, he said, let us meet together in the house of God within the temple. Let us close the doors of the temple, for they are coming to kill you. They are coming to kill you by night. But I said, this is Nehemiah, should such a man as I run away? And what man such as I could go into the temple and live? I will not go in. And I understood and saw that God had not sent him, but he had pronounced a prophecy against me because Tobiah and Sanballat had hired him. For this purpose he was hired, that I should be afraid and act in this way and sin, and so they could give me a bad name in order to taunt me. Remember Tobiah and Sanballat, O oh my God, according to these things that they did, and also the prophetess Noadiah and the rest of the prophets who wanted to make me afraid. So here we have Nehemiah. He is a leader in the midst of his people. And I think we often forget that when we read the story of Nehemiah, that we're just reading about someone who's accomplishing a, a crazy big task in a short amount of time, or he's building a big wall around this city, or that he has the heart of the king because he is his cupbearer. But the story is about a leader. And in this, this instance, this is about a leader who is trying to be tricked and is being betrayed by those who were supposed to be close to him and have his back. There was an assassination plot against his life, which is what is being defined here in verses 10 through 14. Shemaiah's solution was for Nehemiah to hide in the temple, even though Nehemiah was not a priest and his presence in the temple would have been against God's law. And as a godly leader, Nehemiah feared God more than man. And that's important. It's important for us to fear God more than man. And his question of, should, should such a man as I run away, revealed his true character, that he was a man of integrity. integrity. He was not one to run away in the face of danger, nor was he one to disobey the law of God. Shemaiah was uncovered to be a corrupt prophet who'd been paid by Tobiah and Sanballat to scare Nehemiah and mar his godly character and reputation. If Nehemiah ran and gave up at this point, it would tarnish his reputation as a man of God. But if he were to disobey the law of God, it would discredit him as the Lord's representative. So once again, Nehemiah was in a place of having to discern, having to hear the voice of God, and once again, giving his plan, his heart, his feelings, his emotions his fears over to God, allowing God to be the just one and the one who would have vindication and bring truth to light. I just want to bring out a few things in this scripture. You're going to read about this in your study guide this week, but I, I don't want to detour. I just want to add in a couple of the points that are made so we can just put them in concrete in our heart. As committed Christians, we must be determined to be obedient to the word of God, even if it is inconvenient. And we must be resolute in our commitment to serve and obey God. It says this in Psalm 55, and, and I have, this, this psalm has been a companion of mine over the years. As, as I have, as Nehemiah shows us, I have felt betrayal by those who were close to me. I have um, been the brunt of someone plotting. And you may have as well. And, and you know, also, we've all done those things ourselves to others. It says this in Psalm 55. Because keep in mind, this wasn't people who weren't close to Nehemiah. These are people who, who he knew. The, the prophet was supposed to be someone who would have been a voice of reason and a voice of truth in his ear, but yet he was corrupt and he was plotting against Nehemiah's life. It says this in Psalm 55, starting in verse 12. If an enemy were insulting me, I could endure it. If a foe were raising himself against me, I could hide from him. But it is you a man like myself, my companion, my close friend, with whom I once enjoyed sweet fellowship as we walked with the throng at the house of God. It says this in verse 17, Evening, morning, and noon, I cry out in my distress, and he hears my voice, which is God. In verse 20, again, he's talking about this pain in his heart. This is David. My companion attacks his friends. He violates his covenant. His speech is smooth as butter, yet war is in his heart. His words are more soothing than oil, yet they are drawn swords. So this is someone who's supposed to be a friend, 
but has become an enemy, who has become one that is betraying and stabbing in the back. But in verse 22, we see David. And we see this in Nehemiah as well in verse 14. They turn to their God. Verse 22, cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. Our God is faithful. He's faithful and we must be obedient to his word and fear him above all others more than anything. And then lastly this morning, I want to emphasize this point as you will be studying this week. Paul reminds the Corinthians or the Corinthian church in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 58 of this. Therefore, my dear brothers, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. So no matter how hard it gets, we must stand on the firm truth of the word of God and be true to the faith that he has called us to. And as a church, we must be committed to one another, pressing one another on to serve God, despite what attacks the enemy might use against the church. Paul in another place in the New Testament says this, do not grow weary in doing good. And I have often applied that in life incorrectly, to be honest. It was like in a trial or in a really tough season, you know, don't grow weary in doing good. But what Paul was addressing in that letter in the New Testament was he was telling the people of God to not grow weary in doing good to each other, to not grow weary in doing good, to spur one another on or encourage one another or have each other's back, that we would act like true family to each other. It's a challenge for me today. Am I doing that to those around me? Are you doing that to those who you walk through life with? I pray this week that you do find yourself asking God to give you wisdom and discernment beyond your years in Him, that you would hear His voice above all others and listen and obey, that we would be like Nehemiah, even in the face of his enemies. He listened to the voice of God and found his purpose, his identity, and his security in God and God alone. Be blessed this week. So glad you joined us this morning. Just ask you to continue to connect with all the digital connection points we, hear, we, we have here at In Focus Church as we continue to be in many ways physically distanced but socially responsible. Join our Facebook page, our YouTube channel, like and subscribe. Find us on Instagram. We love you very much. We'll see you real soon.